So I've been uh, going through old poems, and uh, it, it's been a journey because uh, you know you look back on these things and you're like, I don't even remember this one, <laughs> you know, which uh, which is a statement on, on its uh, memorability. But anyway, uh, some some of the old ones uh, I'm still proud of, and so I decided to bring a handful of those tonight just because I've been reading a lot of the new ones at, at some other events. Um, I, I will say really quick, my book is for sale. It is not a poetry book, though. Um, it is called Fixed Stars Govern a Life, Decoding Sylvia Plath. And uh, those of you who know me well know that I'm a professional tarot card reader. And uh, back when I was in graduate school in 2007, I realized that there was a lot of tarot imagery in the work of Plath. And my professor was like, really? <laughs> and um, apparently nobody had realized this, and uh, not in the 50 years or so since she has died. And um, so uh, it's, I've spent the last eight years decoding her work, and it's been a journey. And the book was just released the end of last year, early this year. Uh, I say that because the, the exact release date is still questionable. But um, anyway, so here we go. Um, I thought I would pick a storm poem since we had such a brutal storm this afternoon. It's called University of Missouri St. Louis Library During a Storm. Thunder shakes the fifth floor where I sit, closest to the roof, to feel it better, to watch light flicker, lick, at both wet and dry sides of window glass, tamed and untamed the electric empty level, this one I like best, with the research no one reads, at these tables clean of debris, except for me and a shiny penny. We are kin as clutter here, and not worth much without a lot of help. Low mumbling, distant rumbling voices from somewhere, far from this forest of tall shelves, microfish, binders, the sign says no, noise, but who are we kidding if a tree falls and all that? I fight the urge to scream just to do it because I could, because I won't be caught. Outside the mirror violence of my brain subsides to gentle rain, and alone here how in peace I think I preferred the storm. So this is a playful one. It's called Anti-Gravity. The stars have learned to trust us, movily. <laughs> Let me try this again. The stars have learned to trust us, moving warily on their course, counting on the last astral status quo. But what if we decide one day to just let go, release? The beat of 21 guns. What if we revolt and explode, blast raining into space, flak speeding from every snowy peak, every curve of the green to empty earth? A great loosening of shoes, doors, hard cars, flower pots, lions, and keys, everything that wasn't attached, banded in the red tie of gravity. Pennies rushing like the bullety drop off of the Empire State Building, our bodies becoming missiles all failing to do the job of staying put. Smiles into shrapnel hurtling through space to puncture the dead peace, to litter the cosmic clean with debris. We'd fire and drill holes of light in whatever we hit, shooting into that solid, soft dark. A pom pom pummel proving our existence. An ack 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 of final flash, leaving trillions of celestial wounds against a silk purple sash. The steady nova tread with dread. They fear us, you know. These souls, those holes, we are full of them. So I've been putting together a collection of place poems, and I thought I'd bring a couple here. This one is called Key West. Listen to the calling dawn, the seaside rifts of pirate ships, last night's drunks swayed navigation, and ragged roosters in the street. 
permanent summer here. The wanted feeling is hot enough to melt hell, cycling circles, whirling through stores and spiral paths. The voyage is forsaken in intolerable daytime up and down Duval. Love's blindfold toward decayed earthen waves reeling in. Six-toed cats spawned from the last frost of Papa Hemingway's beard. The palms, the bougainvillea, wrap around shady peace with jungle arms and loneliness's graceless face, falling in to surrender tired luck. This is the southernmost, and the farther southernmost still, a land of lizards, key lime anesthesia, and the Walgreens Theater. No horror show, ghost movie stars resurrect within glittery men as the aqua green sea washes brown fishy brine at the beach. It's just the overboard, unsung, heart-wet waste tossing hurricanes back at a needy sea. The mixed sounds of warbling, a simultaneous spent competition from dampened doorway mouths, spewing punk rock, pissing disco against parrot heads and Kokomo, promising AC and a mojito before applauding sunset at Mallory Square. There, before the swell foam ride, a falling red sun swallows its old teeth and grief. Carnivorous and sure, this place circles us to taste, trying for a killing. With held breath, we walk that death plank willing. All right, and another uh, tropical theme. This is called Emergency Room on Vacation. 3 a.m. in Miami, no Cuban bongo melody can be found in the quick blip of monitor beeps. Those groans from broken bones down the hall, that smell of alcohol, swabs, disinfectant. My nervous, twitchy blood, busy, feet, hands, eyes cloudy from forced rising. The curtain pulled, a dark mountain sheet between us, paling against the tight wall's blue fluorescent hue. Someone's been shot, I thought. I heard him coughing up his guts, cursing in Spanish while my love lay on a cot. The god doctor's looking to name the source of this unknown pain while he rides, a blossom of flame burning inside him for the last five days into this sixth. It's my fault. That's been his joke, but we both know it's not. I ate the apple. I took his rib. But at noon just yesterday, which feels like today with still no sleep, under Hermes hot golden hands, I tanned topless on that sugary shore, six hours wearing sunglasses, sipping icy drink, drinks to boleros in the sound machine. I beheld a shark cruise past in boredom between swimmers along the white sand coast, gray and big as a sofa. It had a grand fin, and I loved every moment of terror. I loved its nonchalance as swimmers stood paralyzed, waiting for it to move through the water, while shrieking boys chased it along the land's dampened brim. I loved its power, unused and entirely possible, the absolute reality of this fishy monster, and I am terrible, this small wife, this knight in a chair. Can't the doctor see? It's his nerves that did it, that made him sick. I'll bet I did it to the nerves I bit in. Can't the doctor see my fault, my fin? We okay You've that? got about five minutes, seven okay. minutes. All right. This is called Viva Las Vegas. Driving weightless on southwestern moonscape, hypnotized by broken yellow lines of long Nevada desert highways. Sun sinks before us, this indebted servant. Darkness sets in. Glowing Vegas is 50 miles away. And to be cliche because we're here, a picture says a thousand words. We pull in toward town around midnight. The city exploded in light. This is a town on purpose, created for no other reason than fun. The ground hurts to stand on. 
in hateful bright day, zoysia lawns brown from brutality of summer golden, dirt showing through the bald patches like scalp on a gambling man's thinning hair. The blue is clear with whispers of clouds gathering in groups streaked across. They carry intention of getting somewhere, conspiring to create some sort of system later. In the distance, Rusty red mountains erupt, defying sensible gravity that perpetually holds the dawn, sorry, perpetually holds the rest of us down, rising out from hard ground, mounds of sifted cocoa powder, cut by long gone ice, refuse to conform. Clusters of cottages crawl away from casinos and roads, from McCarran air and into the foothills. They climb the base as far as they can, without tumbling in the guilty weight of losers back to try again. Shame, heat, dryness, greed. The world is governed by a kind of cruelty. The best you can hope for is chance. It's what we make of our lucky breaks. They know this in Vegas. Mountain range, open fissures, and sore spots of red clay. There's no more green in the wallet. Wrinkles, gashes, the ravages of time walk to encase the neon birthday cake. Heaps of rocky, fat frosting mount the edges of town. Tall, even spaced palms along the boulevard like too many candles with tops bursting leafy fans of flame. It feels like too much caffeine, worn down, jittery, shaking from the on switch, stuck the volume too high, too long. You long for a field, a quiet meadow, where there is no such thing as luck. And uh, maybe one more? Sure. This is called Urban Waning. Here on the moon, it's really not much different from a rainy day downtown. The sky is the same flat gray concrete. It towers over towers with wisps of toxic dust. Whereas back home it might just be subway vapory mist. Wherever we go, potholes are craters and craters are potholes. Foiling the tired tires of rovers or out to botch the shallow gravity of big designer boots. Here and there are rocks to kick, collect, and were tilted, nameless, aimless, and apprehensive, reflecting on what we see as backlash from the past or real time. We move dependably through schedules with synchronous rotation, always showing our brighter face, pretending we're planets without a dark side never to be eclipsed, that worlds revolve around us, that we look good, at least from a distance, that we have some pull on the earth, that we're always in the right light, fantastic, part whirling cosmos, magnetic field, celestial body, and still in both places, unknown. Thank you.